Welcome to More Than a Song, where you get a chance to experience great music in an intimate concert setting. I'm Denise Graves, and today we're featuring singer and songwriter Ted Pierce. Ted grew up an atheist, fronting rock and roll bands in the 80s in the Dallas, Texas area. In 1990, he began to attend a Messianic Jewish congregation. By the end of the decade, he began writing music for his newfound faith in Jesus. He signed with Galilee of the Nation Records and put out several notable projects. Let's take a listen to his music. I found a thing just the other day And I needed to throw it away I can't lose this permanently I'm gonna take it right on down to the Dead Sea Throw it out in the Dead Sea and While I'm standing at the Dead Sea I saw a man looking back at me Could it be the man I was Or the man that I need to be Staring into the Dead Sea can flow, the heavens fall and the high winds blow, but then somehow we all wind up here, in that place where we face our fear, out on the Dead Sea, out on the Dead Sea. Don't know how it got this far I started wondering where you are And I was hidden in the garden well Hoping that the saints don't tell on me Now I find me at the Dead Sea Nothing lives in the water here Nothing lives anywhere near here I'm so afraid to let it be and I'm hanging on desperately So afraid of the Dead Sea Oh, ain't it funny How waves can flow The heavens pull And the high winds blow But then somehow Dead Sea Out on the Dead Sea
nations stand against you? Who among them is your friend? The king is calling from his throne in Jerusalem, seeking those that he might send. The Holy Spirit is my armor. The word of God is my soul. with flesh and blood but with the powers of the air put on the helmet of salvation and shot your feet to take this good news everywhere the Holy Spirit is my Ted has traveled the planet with his music, and in 2009, he started the Walk for Remembrance to fight anti-Semitism, which is now an annual prayer walk held in 50 cities. Recently, Terry Black sat down with Ted to get a glimpse of his story. Well, you know, Ted, listening to your music, I have to say, it makes me not only want to sing along, but to dance. Oh, good. <laughs> good. How did you get started in writing all this music? Uh, I I, I come from a family of musicians on my mother's side and my father's side. We, whenever we would get together, we'd just have a big hoedown, you know. Dad's side was uh, more blues and country, you know, yeah. whereas, you know, my mom's side was pretty much all country. And oh, my goodness. And I grew up wanting to do something other than blues or country, and mm -hmm. I got into rock and roll at a young age. Well, then, after rock and roll, though, something happened to you. I mean, you were not a Christian, right? Oh, yeah. I was, uh, I was an atheist, which is, you know, pretty convenient if you want to sing rock and roll. <laughs> uh, and I did that for, uh, gosh, I started playing professionally at age 15. And, oh, my goodness. And I guess I was about 29. And I didn't want to end up like some of my musician relatives who all died of sclerosis of the liver from being alcoholics. Mm -hmm. So anyway, 
uh, a guy made me mad one day, uh, this Christian guy made me mad, and I decided I was going to prove the Bible was wrong, and I, I guess you see how that worked out. I know. <laughs> And, uh, and I just read the Bible, and, uh, you know, I, it was really interesting because really my career was about to take off. Uh, I, had, I was uh, working with this big-time producer in Hollywood, and, and suddenly I just didn't want any of that anymore. I, uh, I just found something better and walked away. You walked away yeah. from all of that, but you embraced something better. It was a life change, wasn't it? Yeah, you know, when I met... Yeshua, Jesus, he, uh, he was nothing like what I thought he was. Mm -hmm. And I think we sometimes forget that those who don't know him don't know him, mm -hmm. you know. He was nothing like what I thought he was. And when I met him, I couldn't resist, you know. Mm. So, uh, I, like I said, I was studying the Bible to prove that it was not true. Right, right. Uh -huh. And I noticed, there was one thing that I noticed, that, that all these people were Jews. Okay, you know? yeah, they are. <laughs> you know, if, if you look, <laughs> even in the were. New Testament, you know, everyone in there is Jewish. You know, I thought Peter Pretty was the much. Pope and Mary was a Catholic and John was a Baptist <laughs> and Paul was a Pentecostal. <laughs> But they were all Jewish. Okay. So, so as I began reading, I mean, I, for about four months, I was reading to prove it was wrong. But then one night, I just, you know, I just looked up in the sky and I said, you know, I trust you. Mm. And uh, life hadn't been the same. That was January 15th, 1990. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, and so, but then I started wondering, uh, you know, what happened to the Jews? You mm -hmm. know, where did they go? Because in the Bible, they're all Jews, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so I just started calling around to different churches, asking them if they had a lot of Jewish people there. Because I... <laughs> I wanted to meet a Jewish person that believed in Jesus, you okay. know, just like the Bible, you know. Right. So uh -huh. anyway, I, I found a place uh, where Jewish people go, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, listen. That believe in Jesus. That believe in okay. Yeshua. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I grew up in a town known for racism. I really didn't know any Jewish people my entire life until okay. this time. And now I sort of entered into this cultural world that I had never seen before and started eating stuff like couscous and Right. Playing instruments called shofar, and you know uh -huh. what I mean. Yeah. And, uh, and I got involved with just it was a whole new world and culture for me. And mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know they because they go on the Sabbath uh, Saturdays. I was going on Sundays to different churches and just seeing what the differences were. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. After about four months of this, I just knew that God had called me to this little Jewish congregation and surrendered. And <laughs> life has never been the same since. No, no, it's been a it's been a rocket ship adventure ride. So I on this rocket ship. You know, you definitely have God-given talents for singing, and 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 when you write your music, it's God-inspired. So, do you feel your talent that was once for rock and roll that God has been using it now, singing Jewish Messianic Jewish music? Yeah, I I really believe that God was training me even in those secular days to mm -hmm. to not be afraid of the worst kind of sinners because I was one of them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, so now I, I, I feel like, you know, my past experience in the world gave me, uh, I, I have no fear to, mm. to walk right into the middle of them, you know. So, so anyway, I, uh, I used to write songs. I could pick a topic and write it. But, but now it seems like usually I'm inspired when I'm just reading the Word of God and I can, I can hear Him singing over me, you know really? what I mean? Really? Yeah. Oh, that is so, so cool. I, so I'd say about 90% of the songs that I've written since 1990 were songs that as I'm just reading the Word, I can, I can hear a melody to it. Oh, that is great. And you know, not only has your music been impactful to the world, but you also have gone through different endeavors, like the March for Remembrance. Sure. Can you just share a little bit about that? Sure. Well, uh, this began when I, I, I played at a church in Germany, and they were all the children of Nazis, and they had this guilt about what their fathers had done, and they wanted to do something about it, and they were going to take this long prayer walk uh, just a few of them in the elders and leaders of the church. And I just suggested, you know what, you, you, Germany wasn't the only guilty country and, mm -hmm. uh, and it's not the only anti-Semitic place in the world today, so you need to open this up, let all the nations come and walk with you. And they were shocked at that thought. Right. Uh, but as I went around America telling people what they were planning to do, uh, a lot of people came. And we had 35 Jewish people from America, mostly from my congregation. We had two Holocaust survivors who are believers. Mm. And, and, and we invited different nations over the years. And so every year in Europe, we'd go to a different country where we'd been invited. And we'd help them do sort of like a long prayer walk to uh, wow. just sort of uh, confess the past, mm -hmm. you know, and... Uh, and uh, provide hope for the future. Well, you said to me in 2018, there's a walk to Jerusalem. Is that similar or is that yes. something different? Well, we, 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 every country we went, we would build an organization. We'd spend a year networking mm -hmm. churches together. We've been now to Ukraine, Poland, Latvia, Lithuania, Austria, Hungary, and Western and Eastern Germany. 
And then also March of Remembrance uh, came to America, and we've been all over America. Now we've got four cities, four nations of South America oh and the Philippines. Goodness. So we've been building these organizations in okay. all these different nations. And last February, we had our first international conference in Germany of all those different organizations. And uh, we're working with World Jewish Congress, the Simon Wiesenfeld, uh, and, and March of the Living, which is actually the, the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. And we're planning for something called March of the Nations in May of 2018, where we're going to walk up to Jerusalem to celebrate their seven, the 70th birthday of, of the modern state of Israel. Oh, that we're would expecting be... at least 50,000, and, and you there. should go. All of I you should go. go. I do, too. Yeah, well, come on. Well, okay, well, you know, I think this is fascinating. Oh, yeah. So, can you share, this is something, look at this, isn't this a crazy kind of goggle, is it, or well, what do you think you know, it is? You probably started seeing these on television, it's called virtual reality. Well, I have mm -hmm. a son who is a filmmaker in San Francisco where this was really invented. And about two years ago, he told me about this, and we got to work on producing a virtual reality tour of Israel. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I can't so, wait. So for five weeks, we went every day, all day long, shooting all over the sites of Israel. So, okay. so with one of these and, your, and a cell phone, you can go actually stand in the places you've read about in the Bible. No way. You mean like if I was in the Garden of Gethsemane, mm -hmm. I could take, put this on, with my phone? No, you can okay. sit right there where you are and put this on and be standing in the Garden of Gethsemane. No way. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Virtual reality, and if you haven't looked through this, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Right. And it sounds okay. crazy, but uh -huh. I promise you, when you try it, you'll see what I mean. Uh -huh. You put this on, and you it's like time travel. You really are standing somewhere else. Oh, my goodness. I mean, your brain's going, okay, I know my feet are in Pittsburgh, but I'm standing at the Garden of Gethsemane. And so that's what we did. We, we produced a, a virtual reality tour. Some of it's just music where you can stand and look around and mm -hmm. with the scriptures up and floating in the sky, you know. And, <laughs> okay. and some of it you have a tour guide telling you what you're looking at and explaining the history. Okay. And, and uh, I've got more than 100 episodes ready to go. Really? I've only put out 11 of them so okay. far. But, but we're waiting for people to catch up. And as soon as, as, soon as people have got that, Fox Business rep, uh, says that 75 million homes will be virtual reality compliant by the end of next year. No way. Yeah. I've it's, never it's, heard it's that. It's coming fast. People don't realize it, but when right. it hits, it's going to be fast. That'll be great. So we can have our tour yeah. right, right at home in a yeah. way. Yeah. So, well, this has been I, awesome. You have been giving us so much insight, and I'm excited about joining you in some future endeavors. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're going to bring more people to Israel than Moses did. Amen. That sounds, <laughs> I'm one of them. All right. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. <laughs> Thanks. This next song comes from Zechariah 8, and in fact, it is the Father's burden for his people. So help me in just declaring that I am zealous over Zion, the very words of our Father.
turn from the east and the west to dwell in Jerusalem. They will be my people, for I am their God, in truth and in righteousness. for the peace of Jerusalem. And the salvation of your ancient chosen people, wherever they may be. you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. May the Lord grant you his peace. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. May the Lord grant you his peace. Thank you for joining us for more than a song. We would love to hear from you. Contact us at family at ctvn.org or call us and we will pray for the Holy Spirit to move on your behalf. Until next time, keep looking for the new song he sings over you. I'm Denise Graves and I'll see you next week. And I will bless them. Arriba, arriba!